Hey YouTube Motor Racing Network, Steve Post here with another great collection of diecast. Remember these diecast are available at your local diecast dealer or at planbsales.com. Go to your diecast store, find out what they have. If they don't have one that you're looking for or you don't have a diecast store, we are your plan B. Planbsales.com, we've got you covered there as well. And we have a great collection of cars fresh and new from Lionel. So let's get started with some Kyle Larson diecast that we have. Of course Kyle doing a great job in his rookie year. This the Clorox colors on his Chevrolet. We have the standard traditional non-autographed car and the special autographed edition available right now of Kyle Larson on the Clorox car. This is the liquid color finish of the inverted paint scheme on the target car. Remember the inversion car, the night car, they run this in the night races because, well, the colors look a lot better under the light. So we have got liquid color scheme as well, liquid color finish as well, that is. We've got the non-autographed edition and the autographed Kyle Larson car. And this kid, very, very strong lately, so we have got a great collection of Kyle Larson cars. Speaking of young racers, on a tear, how about Chase Elliott in the NASCAR Nationwide Series? You're going to want to gobble up this diecast. This is the standard traditional Napa finish, and then we have the same standard traditional finish, Napa color of the Camaro, autographed by Chase Elliott. So autographed, non-autographed by Chase Elliott, one of the top NASCAR Nationwide Series cars, and that same paint scheme in a different finish, the color chrome finish as well with Chase Elliott. So some great cars for Chase Elliott. His teammate at Junior Motorsports, Regan Smith, he scored the win in the season opening race down at Daytona. Here is that race winning car and he kept the car pretty clean. You can see some tape marks on the front of it. Doesn't have all the confetti that a lot of times they have on it, but this is the race winner, Ragu, on it and autographed by Regan Smith. So a piece of history right here with Regan Smith's autograph on a Daytona winning car in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. Jeff Gordon, the Exalta paint scheme. You know, it used to be when this was DuPont, it was the standard multicolored machine. Exalta, they bought DuPont, it's the same company, just a different name, and they have gone with a lot of different paint schemes. Remember this one, the Texas A&M engineering car that they raced earlier this year. Very, very rich looking race car. Really good in the standard finish, but boy, in the color chrome, this absolutely pops. It looks just really, really good in the color chrome finish. So Texas A&M Engineering is what they saluted, what they honored back earlier this year. And this car looks really, really good for Jeff Gordon. David Reagan, we've talked about him and we've talked with him many times. The Farm Rich paint scheme, this is the color chrome finish of his Ford with the Farm Rich paint scheme on it. And Kyle Busch, the M&M's colors, color chrome finish for Kyle with the M&M's color. This the pretzel paint scheme, of course, all of the great M&M's flavors that Kyle races throughout the year. And speaking of Kyle, speaking of tasty treats, how about the Skittles kids car? And these kids cars are 1 18th scale. You know, you don't want the kid to play with your collector's die cast. These, these kids cars are fantastic. Plastic cars made just for kids. So they can play with them on the floor and you don't get twisted up because they're playing with your good die cast. These kids cars, really, really cool. And this is the latest one with a Skittles paint scheme for Kyle Busch. All right, while we're on the Kyle Busch subject, let's continue on with 164th scale cars. The M&M Peanut car available in 164th scale. And that same car that we talked about just a little bit ago, the M&M's Pretzel paint scheme available as well for Kyle Busch. And ah, just talking about Kyle Busch's car, Makes me hungry for chocolate, that's for sure. The M&M's group, they do a really, really good job with their sponsorship. It was really cool to see earlier this year they've extended that agreement with Joe Gibbs Racing as well along the way. So really, really cool to have M&M's, one of the longtime sponsors in the sport, and we've got all this great die-cast cars to, 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 to showcase all of the great different paint schemes that they've had along the way. Austin Dillon, a couple of his cars available. This is the Bass Pro Shops paint scheme and the Bad Boy Buggies paint scheme for Austin Dillon, another one of the great rookie of the year candidates for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Paul Menard had the Richmond colors on the Menards Chevrolet. I think I said that right, by the way. All of the Menards in there, and this car is available in 164 scale. Joey Logano, the Auto Trader Ford from up at Penske Racing, that is available. Joey, just one of the hot drivers as we race our way through the chase, and that car in 164 scale is available. Last week we had the 124 scale of the Meguiar's paint scheme. The 164th is in for Greg Biffle over at Roush Fenway Racing. So, those of you that collect those 164 scale cars of Biff, 
we've got your paint scheme as well. Jimmy Johnson, the red, white, and blue Lowe's paint scheme, the Lowe's historic or patriotic color scheme for Jimmy Johnson, available in 164 scale. We've got Danica Patrick's test car for GoDaddy, and it's the car that they race during test sessions or use during test sessions. They have the very minimal identity, a lot of times primer colored. We've got Danica Patrick's GoDaddy test car available in 164 scale cars. Now also we got more David Reagan cars. This is the CSX paint scheme for David Reagan in 164th and the Farm Rich paint scheme for David in 164th scale. Kevin Harvick's Budweiser red, white, and blue paint scheme. This was the salute, uh, one of their salute cars that they had during the Memorial Day weekend and this is Harvick's salute to the troops, salute to the military back during Memorial Day weekend, the red, white, and blue Budweiser scheme and Chase Elliott, the Chevy Camaro from Junior Motorsports available in 164th scale as well. And finally, 187th scale pull cars. Here's Kyle Larson's pull car. This is where you pull it back and it rolls and this is a keychain for all of you Kyle Larson f uh, fans on the 187 scale cars. So we have got a wide gamut of race cars here. A lot of the young talent and some of the old veterans represented with this shipment of cars that are available now at your local diecast dealers or at planbsales.com. And stay with us. We've got some great questions coming up. It's the post show coming right at you next. All right, it's time for the post show. Now, this is our favorite spot because, face it, don't we all just love to talk racing? And that's what we do here on the post show. How this works is we're here on YouTube. Right down below, just type in your question, and we will get an answer to you on a future edition of the post show. want to qualify this. A lot of times we get the questions about when is such and such a diecast coming in. Folks, we try to have it. It is on the website on planbsales.com when the release date is. And a lot of times that's all we have. We, we, we wish we had all of the dates for everything so that we could share with you so you knew exactly. We try our best to answer those. But there's a lot of times we just don't know until they get real close to us as to when they're going to be arriving. But we love all the communication and all the uh, emails and all the notes right down below here on YouTube. I'm going to tie a couple of them together this time. Chuck Phillips writes in and says, Do you think Larson is going to win a race this year? Want to tie that one to NASCAR Go 19, who, sat, who asked, Do you think somebody not in the chase will win one of the final ten races? If so, who do you think and where at? Okay, the who do I think is Kyle Larson. I mean, this kid is absolutely wheeling these race cars. I mean, and it is across the board, no matter what track we go to, Kyle Larson is up there mixing it up with chase drivers. I, my hunch is it won't take this long, but if I had to bank on some place I think he wins, I think he wins down at Homestead. That is an old worn out racetrack where a driver gets up on top, up on the cushion if you will, for a dirt tracker like Kyle Larson, and that is his favorite track. So I'm not sure we have to wait to Homestead, but if I have to pick one track, I'm picking Kyle Larson to win at Homestead could be that is a second win for Kyle Larson. That's how good they have been along the way. Noah Anthony writes in and says, do you think Clint, Boy Clint Boyer will get a win this year? Noah, I, I hate to say this, but I don't. I mean, I just, I mean, you know, and, and, and we're going to Kansas in a few weeks, and Clint's very, very good there, but thus far, I just haven't seen the speed out of Clint Boyer where he's running up front all the time. He's not leading laps. He's not running up in the top five. And the problem is, is when you have the Penske guys, the Hendrick guys, Harvick, and Kyle Larson all running up front, I think you've got to look at that group for winners. I love Kyle. I love Clint Boyer. One of my favorite people to talk with. One of my favorite guys in the garage area. But I just don't see the speed right now that puts him in a spot. Now, again, fuel mileage races. Talladega, of course, being a wild card race. He's pretty good at Martinsville. I think Boyer could win. I mean, he's a capable driver with a capable team, but right now, just to go out sheer speed-wise and win a race, I think there are other teams that are performing so much better than that. Kyle Busch fan, 1818, writes in, do you think JGR will contend for the championship since their horsepower is back on track? And, you know, if you'd have talked to me two weeks ago about this, I'd have said yes. Now I'm not really sure because now that they seem to have a little bit more speed, they've got no luck at all. Just look back at the race at New Hampshire. We have Denny Hamlin with some kind of fueling problem on the car. Who's ever seen that before? That's just a parts failure there's nothing you can do about. Then you have Matt Kenseth getting a little out of shape. Who runs into him? Kyle Busch. So I, I hate to say this right now, it looks like maybe the performance 
of the Gibbs camp is a little bit better. But boy, they need to get a turnaround in luck right now. And, uh, and, and through no fault of Kenseth or Kyle Busch, they need to stop running into each other. And again, that's not either one of their faults, but man, that just goes to show you how things are over at Joe Gibbs Racing. And, and right now, it's a little bit of a struggle over there. That doesn't mean they can't come back and win a couple races and climb back into it. They're that good. Riley White writes in and says, who do you think will fill in the seat of the Richard Petty number no. 9 machine in 2015? And that's a great question. And, you know, I mean, I hear all the rumbles like everyone else, but I, I, I just am not big on speculating on these things because the problem of it is, is when you speculate, there's a chain reaction. So, in other words, if we say this driver's going in over there, well, what about all the guys working on that driver's team? And wait a minute, our driver's leaving. And all those families and everything. So I've never been big on speculating. I think there's some speculation out there, and I think there's some really good race cars, and that is a premier seat that a lot of drivers are going to want to get into. I know a lot of drivers are talking to them, just not sure which one ends up with the ride. Kind of related to that, Thomas writes in and says, with Marcus Ambrose leaving NASCAR and returning back to the V8 supercars, what do you think of his career in NASCAR? I'm telling you, when I think of Marcus Ambrose, I think of a treat. What a treat it has been for us in NASCAR to watch this guy over the 10 years or so that he's been here. I remember him starting in the truck series and he came out with these goofy, floppy green and yellow hats. And we all put him on. I was an MRN reporter. We all put him on, yucked it up, got a picture. This was before selfies and that time, fine. But I remember when Marcus came, in, Marcus came in and he was always just very, very respectable, just a really nice guy. So. So I think it's a treat that he's a quality guy that's making the decision based on his family. But face it, look at the memories he's given us on road course races. Remember that Watkins Glen win a couple of years ago where him and Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski just took off the gloves and went at it? One of the best finishes in NASCAR history. I remember a Montreal race where he did the unthinkable. Jacques Villeneuve, the track is named after his grandpa. Jacques went out there and roughed up Marcus and Marcus came back and took him out on the home turf. I look at Marcus Ambrose, and when I look at his career, I think we all know the stats, we all know the numbers, but what a treat it's been for us to watch him. And you know what this does? I'm going to be tuned in to the V8 Supercar races when we get him on TV around here because I really have a lot of respect for the way Marcus handled himself off the track, but how good he has been on the racetrack. So love that we had a chance to have a cup of coffee, if you will, for a few years with Marcus Ambrose and certainly wish him the best as he goes forward. And final question we have this time is from Vogel Elliott. If Chase Elliott moves up to Cup, what team do you think he will drive for? Well, if is the question, if is not the question, when is the question? Because Chase Elliott is in the Hendrick camp. He is in the Hendrick organization. And I don't think you leave the Hendrick organization. The problem is, is what becomes available in the Hendrick organization? Jimmy Johnson? He's not going anywhere for a while. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's not going anywhere for a while. Casey Kane, well, th th that might be the opening there, but how do you get rid of Casey Kane? If you're Rick Hendrick, he just won Atlanta. He's racing in the championship. He's done everything he's supposed to do over there. Jeff Gordon, I nah, ain't booting him out. So I think that's the problem. If you're Chase Elliott, you've got a really good problem. You've got a really good seat with Junior Motorsports where you're going out, you're contending for wins in the Nationwide Series. And yes, I understand the anxiousness to move up, but the seats that you're tied into right now may be a year or two away from being available. And I'm not sure you want to jump out of that Hendrick camp. Now, there's satellite teams like Stuart Haas, there's satellite teams, Ganassi's a satellite team of Hendrick Motorsports. Also, the 51 team, H. Scott Motorsports, they're tied in. Maybe there's an answer there, but I'm just not sure you want to get out of that Hendrick camp if you're Chase Elliott. So I think all of us Chase Elliott fans, and we're all fans, may need to just take a breath and say, okay, it might take a year or two longer than we hoped for, but when he gets to Cup, look who he's driving for and look in the car he's at. So it's going to be interesting to see. It's really a, a unique and neat quandary that Rick Hendrick has. So much talent on track and so much talent in the pipeline we just have to see how he figures a way to get them all in the spots they need to be in. And with that, that's going to wrap up the post show here on our Diecast Review Show. We love your questions. Keep them coming in. We love talk racing. Love to talk racing. And remember, all these great Diecast cars available at your local Diecast dealer or at PlanBSales.com.
We love that you guys are getting involved with us here on YouTube. We have the comments below. Feel free to mention your comments here. Follow us on Twitter, at Plan B Sales, and we'll keep you informed on what we have. And please get some back and forth conversation going because we love talking racing and love talking with you race fans out there and we appreciate the business you do give us.